Welcome to Merriam-Webster's Vocabulary Builder. Unit 3. It's always on this side. Also, this hello, I tried to write with my left hand. You'll see what, why, you'll see why in a few seconds. So today, we're just going to go ahead to another 8 roots. And let's just get this started with already. First off, we have to talk about ambi. Ambi is a Latin root, and it basically means on both sides. It also basically means environment, so that's also a pretty good bonus. Okay, so what do we have next? So MB basically means like on both sides, and also the root that we use to go ahead and write like the word ambidextrous. And you know what ambidextrous people are, right? Like it's people who can write with their right hand, and people who can also write equally well with their left hand, like both hands well. Unfortunately, I'm not ambidextrous. Let me show you. So let me write, hello. Here, hello. Let me try writing hello with my left hand. This is gonna be uncomfortable. Hello. Wow, that's so messed up. And so, what do we have now? Let's start with the words. Uh, first, we have ambiguous, ambient, like ambient aware. Stop. Ambient aware and everything is suddenly loud. Really useful when you're a spy. Uh, we have ambivalent and a word apparently called ambit. Now, ambit itself basically means like a range or a limit covered by like something like such as a law. Like there's a speed limit, there's a speed ambient, those kinds of things. Now, next that we have our second root is a Greek root finally called epi, and this basically means on, over, and attacked, attached to. When you're attached to something like epilogue, epite, epitaph, and episet. Those kinds of things, which is pretty interesting. All right, the third one is hype or hypo, which actually means below or under. Now, hype or hypo actually goes ahead. It's also a Greek root, and it also basically means like underwater or under, like under temperature too. So like hypothermia, the thermia part basically means temperature. So hypo basically means like you're having very like you're you're hyped up about the lower temperature your body's hyped up about it so you're basically having hypothermia you're shuddering all the time however your body can't control the heat losing it you 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 lose heat more than you gain heat than you can produce so next up we're going to talk about serm sermo serm or sermo basically means warm and that's really interesting too. This is also, this is a Greek root, and it basically means thermal, thermodynamics, thermonuclear, and British thermal unit. Now, something about thermal, uh, thermodynamics, that's basically the study of literal, like, flowing. Like, thermodynamics of a plane is, like, how well it moves. However, thermonuclear, like, thermonuclear things, like, thermonuclear basically mean like a nuclear bomb, like something related to the division or the splitting or the changing of atoms, which is basically what the A-bomb is, which is pretty interesting, people. Like, and you know what A-bombs and H-bombs are, right? Right? Of course not. All right, the fifth one is another Greek root. It basically means poly. Poly basically sounds like a parrot's name and also the name of some cats. However, it is not that. Poly is actually just mean, it's a Greek root meaning many. That's where we get the word polygon from. Polygons, we have a triangle, square, a pentagon, a hexagon, a heptagon, an octagon, a nonagon, a decagon, and so much more. We also got a dodecagon and so much more. Dun 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 I love making songs up. Anyways, next up we have polyp, and we also use a poly for the word polygot, polymer, and polygraph. Polygraph is actually a really useful tool, and I'll... You'll probably learn that in your math class. Next up is the sixth word, prim, like a technically root. It's also a Latin root, common, very common. It basically means first, first. So, uh, primal, primer, like the prime of your life basically means the best time of your life. When your strength is the strongest, when you can run the fastest. Unlike youth, some people are actually stronger when they're in their youth. Uh, we also have the words primal, primer, and primate. Another one is primordial. Uh, okay, two more roots to go. First one we have to talk about home, homo, uh, which actually comes from the root homos. Now, homos itself basically means same. That's about it. And uh, we have homonym, homogeneous, homologous, and homogenize. Nice. Next up we have to talk about this. Like D-I-S, not T-H-I-S. This, which basically means apart. Like dissuade, disorient, discredit, dislodge, those kinds of words. Which is all really good and up and interesting, to be honest. But I don't think we actually have time for that. Alright, so dissuade, disorient, discredit, dislodge. This is all darn interesting. 
finally, we have to talk about Latin borrowings. Yeah, we don't have mythology, unfortunately. Now, let's start off with this ad hoc. Now, ad hoc basically means you're, like, formed for a literal particular purpose or something, which literally sounds like Latin. Like, ad hoc literally means for this or Latin. Ad hoc, ad hoc, ad domoni. I have to say that word. All right, we also have ad hominem. Ad, that, there's always a word called ad in there. Ad, 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 ad. It's also, it basically means marked by an attack on an opponent's character rather than the answer to the argumentation that the other character is literally saying or the issue is raised. It's like a debate, except you're judging your, if you, except you're criticizing on the other person's personality, not like their, how well they're actually debating, which is actually kind of bad. Next up, we have alter ego, which basically means like a trusted friend that you basically have like, like Bruce Banner's alter ego is the Hulk. Like you're the same person, However, you have different names, different identities, everything like Bruce Banner is Alter Ego is the Hulk. Moon Knight, like there's like the guy who plays Moon Knight's Alter Ego is literally the Moon Knight, the guy who turns into Moon Knight, I forgot what his name was. Uh every superhero has their alter ego, like Peter Parker's alter ego, Spider Man, Steve Rogers Alter Ego, Captain America, Tony Stark's alter ego. Technically Iron Man, but technically he doesn't have it ever since he like shared his secret identity. That's about it. Uh, next one, we have de facto, which actually literally sounds like it, like, basically being such in practice or effect, and so not formally recognized. Like, you're actual, actual, like, doing something, you know, actual. Alright, next up, we have quid pro quo, which basically means something given for something else. Like, you give me, you, I give you this, you give me that. I give you this, you give me this, I give you that, you give me that. I give you those, you give me those. I give you these, I, you give me those. I give you these, you give me those. You, I give you those, you give me these. Wow, wow, wow. Next up, we have ex post facto, which basically means done, made, or formulated, like literally right after the fact. Like when Carl tells us that his reasons for why he literally behaved badly, they, they have nothing but ex facto for like, ex, like excuses for impulsive be behavior, like saying, I did this because you just made it up on the mark. You just didn't think about it. You just made it up just so you could probably get out of trouble. Uh, we have two more to go. Uh, modus operandi, which basically means the usual way of doing something. Like, the yeah, operandi, like usual way. So we have modus vivendi, which is like a practical compromise or agreement arrangement that is acceptable and is also the way everyone is concerned. And it's also a way of life. Nice. So that's basically it for today's episode. I really hope you guys actually did enjoy this because like it's usually seven minutes now and I hope to see you guys soon. Until next time, soon now. Peace. Bye bye.